scared of somebody before, I guess. Well, somebody had to be true, but they're going to get the truth out of the book. It's not like the movie or something. They're going to get the truth out of the book, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It appears that certain undisclosed aspects of Frank Lucas's life were omitted in the film American Gangster, where Denzel Washington plays a starring role. However, Denzel now expresses a desire to reveal the untold details about Frank Lucas that were not depicted in the movie. The acclaimed 2007 film American Gangster chronicles the real-life tale of notorious American D-Lord and white powder smuggler Frank Lucas. However, despite its thrilling narrative, some aspects of the stories presented in the movie were manipulated to align with the producer's chosen narrative. Quote, It's a seductive package, crammed with all the on-screen and off-screen talent that big studio money can buy. New York Times reviewer Manola Dargis, filled with old soul and remixed funk that evoked the city back in the day when H turned poor streets white and sometimes red. The iconic movie critic Roger Ebert said the film is an engrossing story told smoothly and well. In 2007, director Ridley Scott collaborated with Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe to craft one of the most exceptional crime movies in history, American Gangster. Scott skillfully recounted the startling saga of the infamous Harlem crime lord Frank Lucas portrayed by the incomparable Washington. Russell Crowe took on the role of Richie Roberts, the detective pivotal to Lucas's downfall who later developed an unlikely friendship with the formidable kingpin. However, the most chilling aspects were not the dramatized elements, but the stark reality itself. Unveiling the truth behind the terror adds depth to the narrative, shedding light on how one man once wielded control over New York's H industry. Both feel very real, grounded in reality. Uh, there's no, there's nothing movie-ish about it. It's also attractive. <laughs> Um, they're real people. The film to some extent accurately depicted the persona of Frank Lucas and the genesis of his criminal empire. The notorious Blue Magic circulated widely in New York and beyond, firmly under Lucas's control and managed by his gang, which even included his 17-year-old nephew. Lucas wielded power through fear, as demonstrated early in the movie when he didn't hesitate to eliminate those obstructing his path. The brutal execution of Tango, played by Idris Elba, was a grim portrayal of Lucas's savage nature and notably it was based on a real-life incident. Lucas publicly dispatched Tango with four shots to the head showcasing both his ruthless intent and earning him street credibility. You gonna shoot me in front of everybody? Huh? Come on! Furthermore, the film highlighted Lucas's strategic alliances, particularly with the influential Bumpy Johnson, the godfather of Harlem. This mentorship solidified Lucas's standing in the realm of organized crime and established a crucial connection with the Italian Mafia. Following Bumpy Johnson's demise, Lucas ascended to power and ambitiously sought to build his own empire, breaking free from the shackles of the Italian Mafia's influence. The film American Gangster accurately portrayed how Frank Lucas amassed immense wealth by smuggling age from Asia to New York, overseeing the operation's activities in the capital. The smuggling methods depicted in the film largely align with historical facts. However, a crucial detail omitted in the film is Frank Lucas's association with Leslie Ike Atkinson, a retired Vietnam Army sergeant. Who would you get into the States? You don't have to worry about that. In reality, Ike played a pivotal role in the H smuggling operation. In Thailand, he could procure a kilo of H for $4,000 and sell it for $100,000 in the United States. Frank Lucas, recruited by Ike, became a key player in this lucrative venture. Ike had enlisted hundreds of U.S. soldiers to aid in transporting millions of dollars worth of H into the U.S. using military aircraft. The operation involved clever tactics, such as hollowing out furniture and sewing false bottoms into bags, enabling them to smuggle H into the U.S. for distribution by Frank Lucas. And there'll be more, much more, I guarantee it. And it was all the same to you. From 1968 until Frank Lucas's arrest in 75, this collaboration between Ike and Lucas generated staggering profits exceeding $400 million. In 1975, following nearly a decade of dominance, Frank Superfly Lucas saw his reign come to an end when New York authorities apprehended him. The film credits detective Richie Roberts with Lucas's capture, but in reality, Roberts played a crucial role in securing a confession from Lucas. Even with Lucas behind bars, his criminal operation continued, perplexing authorities seeking the elusive source of the Blue Magic H supply. President Nixon coined the term the war on America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug 
course. Undeterred, Roberts persisted in his pursuit and located Frank Lucas's family who were still engaged in illegal activities. This led to the discovery of $10 million worth of age. Faced with the prospect of a life sentence, Lucas's young nephew provided additional information about his uncle, resulting in an additional 40-year sentence for Lucas. The story's absurdity reached its peak with Lucas's confession, resulting in a total of 100 jail sentences. However, his cooperation led to a reduction in his sentence from 70 years to just six, ultimately resulting in Lucas's release in 1982. It was terrible. You go to the schoolyards and, and you find needles. Despite this reprieve, Frank Lucas found himself convicted again for selling H in 1984, leading to imprisonment until 1991. But was he always like this? Frank Lucas was born on September 9, 1930 in rural North Carolina into an impoverished household. Growing up, he shouldered significant responsibilities caring for his siblings and navigating the harsh constraints of the Jim Crow laws in the American South. His early years unfolded against the backdrop of the Great Depression, likely subjecting him to financial struggles that might have driven him to engage in early illicit activities such as shoplifting to survive. Lucas often pointed to a pivotal moment in his childhood that marked the turning point towards a life of crime. This transformative incident was the witnessing of his cousin's murder. At the time, Lucas resided in Greensboro and recounted a harrowing night when five members of the Ku Klux Klan, concealed in sheets and hoods, invaded his house. Tragically, they took the life of his 13-year-old cousin on the grounds that he had supposedly looked at a white woman in a flirtatious manner. 12-year-old Frank Lucas witnessed his cousin's at the hands of the KKK. The most tragic passing of a promising young man since G, baby. While there is no concrete evidence to verify the specific incident of the Ku Klux Klan and Frank Lucas's cousin, it is acknowledged that such racially motivated and unreported crimes were unfortunately prevalent during that era. African Americans often avoided reporting such incidents due to a lack of trust in the predominantly white police force, which could be aligned with groups like the KKK. Following the traumatic event, Lucas, now the eldest male in his family, assumed the responsibility of providing for them. He resorted to theft, initially stealing food and later progressing to mugging intoxicated individuals outside a local tavern. During his teenage years, Lucas secured a job as a truck driver, briefly leading an honest life while employed by a pipe company. However, a romantic entanglement with his boss's daughter resulted in a violent altercation. Lucas assaulted his boss with a heavy pipe, set the place on fire, and absconded with $400 from the cash register. He struck his employer with a lead pipe, stole $400, set the establishment on fire, and fled to New York. Fearing the legal repercussions of his actions, Lucas's mother implored him to escape to New York to evade potential arrest and imprisonment. At the age of 16 in the summer of 1946, Frank Lucas ventured to Harlem with the aspiration of making a fortune in the lucrative but illicit realms of D and gambling trade. Observing the substantial profits being made, he quickly decided to carve his path in this underworld. Lucas initiated his criminal career by holding up a bar at gunpoint and pilfering diamonds from a jewelry store. Notably audacious, he purportedly orchestrated the robbery of all participants in a high-stakes craps game and delved into de-dealing within the lower echelons of a gang. He cut the middleman at the drug game and bought product direct from the source in Southeast Asia. In the summer of 66, after shooting an individual who withdrew from a narcotics deal, Lucas attracted the attention of a prominent Harlem gangster, Ellsworth Bumpy Johnson. As the head of an illegal gambling and extortion ring, Johnson took Lucas under his wing, imparting invaluable knowledge and tricks of the trade. With Johnson's passing in 1968, a power vacuum emerged in Harlem presenting an opportunity Lucas was keen to exploit. Seizing territory and establishing his own organization, Lucas ascended to power and commenced his tenure as a formidable figure in the criminal underworld. The problem was very serious. You know, people were dying. The gangsters were making a ton of money, which encouraged them to bring only more in. Once established as a gang lord, Frank Lucas adopted a meticulous approach to his criminal enterprises. Regularly retreating to hotel rooms, he conducted solitary reviews of his gang's operations, analyzing and learning from any mistakes. Lucas engaged in exhaustive mental rehearsals, meticulously scrutinizing every step and detail of his plans to eliminate any potential loopholes. Bags are were marked with different logos, could be anything. In the landscape of New York's rampant mafia presence, Lucas recognized the need to navigate around these powerful entities in his de-smuggling endeavors. During the late 1960s, amid the Vietnam War, Rumors circulated that U.S. soldiers stationed in foreign countries were involved in various illicit activities, including H-use. 
These soldiers returned home with not only PTSD, but also new addictions, contributing to the widespread H epidemic in the United States. The D market featured brand names like Harlem Hijack and Mean Machine. You go down the street and pick up an empty glassy envelope that had more blue magic. Lucas, aiming to circumvent the mafia and establish a direct link to the H source, set his sights on Southeast Asia. He ventured to Thailand, where he connected with Leslie Ike Atkinson, the proprietor of Jack's American Bar a gathering place for African-American soldiers. Atkinson also married to Lucas's cousin and hailing from Greensboro, North Carolina, was someone Lucas deemed trustworthy for the venture. Quote, In Thailand, while he was there, Frank Lucas came to my house and I introduced him to Leon, Atkinson's carpenter, simply telling Lucas that Leon was doing carpentry work for me. Lucas asked Leon what he was doing, and I spoke right up and said Leon was making coffins. That's probably where Lucas got the whole coffin thing. Together, Lucas and Atkinson embarked on a journey through the Thai jungles to locate Atkinson's source, a Chinese Thai individual named Luchi Rubawat. Rubawat owned extensive poppy fields spanning hundreds of acres in dense jungles near Burma and Laos. In these remote locations, they processed the poppies into H within mountain caves nearby. Lucas successfully negotiated a deal with Rubawat, acquiring over a hundred kilos of H at a remarkably low cost, $4,200 per kilo, a stark contrast to the $50,000 he would have paid if dealing with the mafia in the United States. To establish a distribution network, Lucas enlisted the aid of soldiers and enlisted men, ranging from foot soldiers to high-ranking officers. In later years, rumors circulated that Lucas used coffins to smuggle D into America, exploiting the assumption that U.S. Army coffins wouldn't be scrutinized. However, this claim has been debunked, with evidence suggesting that while they may have used this method on a limited scale, the primary mode of smuggling likely involved furniture rather than coffins. I was driven by a desire to punish narcotics violators who were making a lot of money while destroying the city. Lucas and his operation utilized military planes to import D into the United States. The packages would arrive at army bases from where they were then distributed to accomplices responsible for unpacking and preparing them for sale. Distinguishing himself from the typical street H with a purity ranging between 5 and 6 percent, Lucas leveraged the low-cost supply from Thailand to produce a product with an elevated purity level of 10 to 12 percent. Branded as Blue Magic, his H gained popularity among a significant customer base. To enforce his control over the D-Trade, Lucas enlisted his younger brothers as enforcers giving them control over major thoroughfares in Harlem. Additionally, he employed women as D-packers, tasking them with mixing H with cutting agents. To prevent theft, these women were required to work naked, wearing only plastic gloves. I had someone in my own family who became addicted to heroin. I felt a need to find out who was doing this. During the peak of his operation, Lucas boasted about generating millions of dollars daily. To conceal his illicit gains, he engaged in money laundering, utilizing a bank in the Bronx to exchange dirty money for those more legitimate funds. He also hid money in the Cayman Islands, invested in businesses such as dry cleaners and gas stations, and acquired commercial and residential properties across the country. Lucas's criminal empire extended far beyond DT encompassing a web of financial and real estate endeavors aimed at concealing and expanding his wealth. On any investigation into heroin, the goal is to get to the top to get to the supplier. Despite Frank Lucas's preference for casual attire to avoid drawing attention, he acknowledged making a significant mistake in 1971. At that time, he purchased a lavish $100,000 full-length chinchilla fur coat and attended a Muhammad Ali boxing match. In retrospect, Lucas referred to this event as a massive mistake as it marked the occasion where he first attracted the scrutiny of law enforcement. You know, man walks around in $50,000 to chill a coat and never even bought me a cup of coffee. There's something wrong there. The police were reportedly surprised by the quality of Lucas's seats at the match, surpassing those of notable figures like Frank Sinatra and Diana Ross. This conspicuous display of wealth naturally raised suspicions about an individual who had amassed significant riches, and Lucas believed that he left the fight a marked man. Despite his efforts to keep a low profile, Lucas enjoyed the celebrity circuit, frequently being spotted at some of the best nightclubs in Manhattan. He socialized with prominent figures such as James Brown. Diana Ross, Joe Lewis, and Muhammad Ali. Additionally, Lucas contributed $100,000 to support the making of a 1970s movie titled The Ripoff, a gangster film set in New York City. However, the movie was never completed. He was exposed by the feds when he pulled up to an Ali fight dripping in a floor length. Me, 
A reminder to always stay home. On January 28, 1975, Frank Lucas's property in Teaneck, New Jersey became the target of a raid by the de-enforcement agency. DEA. In a state of panic, Lucas's wife, Julie, allegedly threw suitcases filled with dollar bills out of the window. Despite these attempts to dispose of evidence, the DEA recovered $584,000 in cash from the property, along with keys to some of Lucas's safety deposit boxes in the Cayman Islands. Following the raid, there was no direct evidence linking Lucas to the D operation, and although 10 individuals were arrested, Lucas remained free. However, a turning point came during interrogations when Lucas's nephew, under pressure, provided crucial information. He identified individuals, revealed locations where D deals occurred, and pointed out sites where payphones were utilized for their illicit dealings. This information led to the arrest of an additional 43 people and eventually brought Lucas to trial. There were people being shot. They cleaned up the old time it was through violence. During the trial, the true extent of Lucas's H operations was laid bare. Witnesses testified about the high purity of his H, attributing catastrophic effects to the substance and linking it to numerous D overdoses in the African American community. Prosecutor Richard Roberts went on to assert that Lucas was responsible for more African American deaths than the actual KKK, alluding to the impact of his product, Blue Magic. Subsequently, Lucas was found guilty and sentenced to 70 years in prison. What they did was a perversion of the American way. They had the best product, they had the best people selling the product. Following his arrest, Frank Lucas faced the seizure of his assets, including the alleged millions in cash, although the FBI has not officially confirmed the existence of such funds. However, Lucas swiftly transitioned to cooperating with the government, providing them with information about his accomplices and corrupt members of the New York Police Department (NYPD) involved in his operations. Even his longtime contact in Thailand, Leslie Ike Atkinson, was among those named by Lucas. Lucas's cooperation proved highly valuable, resulting in 150 cases including charges against 30 members of his own family and a significant number of officers from the NYPD and New York Drug Enforcement Agency. In recognition of his assistance, Lucas received a reduction in his sentence, ultimately serving 15 years before his release in 1981. That's what I did, that's what I do. And that's what it was. Despite facing another arrest in 1984 for additional D-related charges, Lucas was released in 1991. Remarkably, he maintained contact with Richard Roberts, his former prosecutor who played a role in helping Lucas get his life back on track. The relationship between Lucas and Roberts evolved to the point where Roberts became the godfather of Lucas's son underscoring the complex and unusual dynamics that unfolded between the former criminal and the prosecutor turned mentor. And that's, yeah. my, that's my godson, right? Hello, and handsome. They, uh, and they take care of him. They do everything for him. Uh, to school and everything else. All right. Uh, Doing well in school? Straight A. In his later years, Frank Lucas expressed regret for his past life as an H kingpin, acknowledging the immense harm he had caused. He admitted that, at the time, his sole focus was on money, but he came to view the H business as the worst business. After returning to Harlem following his release from jail, Lucas witnessed the severe social deprivation and devastation in the area, leading him to realize his partial responsibility for the conditions. Wow, I should hope so. I feel that way. I don't know how you feel. I should hope so. Lucas played a role in the movie American Gangster a dramatized version of his life where Denzel Washington portrayed him. He actively participated in the film's production, regularly appearing on set to offer guidance and insights into his life. However, even Lucas conceded that the film was only partially true, with certain elements embellished for dramatic effect. During his later years in Newark, bound to a wheelchair, Lucas collaborated with his daughter on an organization called Yellow Brick Road, supporting children with incarcerated parents. He also penned a memoir about his time as a Harlem D. Kingpin, committing all profits to the promotion of education. Lucas believed in the importance of educating children and hoped they could learn from his mistakes. Hey, here's some of it before, I guess. Well, some of it had to be true, but they're gonna get the truth out the book. It's not like the movie or something. They're gonna get the truth out the book, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Frank Lucas passed away on May 30th, 2019 at the age of 88 from natural causes. He spent his final years in a care facility in Cedar Grove, New Jersey, reflecting on his tumultuous past and striving to make amends through philanthropic efforts. But the crucial question lies here is who was responsible for the downfall of such a successful gangster when he himself said, I'm not going to credit them with getting me. Those three cops couldn't catch a cold. Well, the answer is quite shocking. 
it was his own best friend. The friendship between Frank Lucas and Richie Roberts is indeed a perplexing aspect of this complex and unconventional story. Despite Lucas's downfall and incarceration, the two men remained in contact, and Roberts has openly spoken about their friendship, advocating for the concept of second chances. Roberts has emphasized Lucas's apparent remorse for the havoc caused by Blue Magic, the potent H that wreaked havoc on the streets of New York, claiming numerous lives. It's extremely dangerous, but the whole goal in undercover work is to gain information and evidence about the organization and the individuals in that organization. Lucas, who viewed himself as a businessman rather than a D-Lord, may have influenced Robert's perception of their relationship. This perspective might have played a role when Roberts accepted the role of becoming the godfather to Ray Lucas, Frank's son. The connection between the two families appears to have extended beyond the complexities of the criminal past. It's been reported that Roberts even financially supported Ray, facilitating his attendance at a private Catholic school. The pair remained friends up until Frank's death in 2019 at the remarkable age of 88. In 2007, speaking to the New York Times, Roberts reflected upon Lucas's past, stating, quote, Frank Lucas has probably destroyed more black lives than the KKK could ever dream of. American Gangster is often remembered as a classic directed by Ridley Scott featuring a commanding performance from Denzel Washington. Washington's portrayal of a character combining efficiency and ruthlessness to establish authority on the streets of Harlem and beyond is considered evergreen. His charismatic performance captured the attention of Frank Lucas, who closely observed the film's production. Throughout the shoot, a mutual respect developed between Washington and Lucas. Frank came along at a time, or the time was right for him. He was, he, he was ready at a time when the French connection heroin, quote unquote, had dried up. For Washington, it wasn't just the criminal narrative that intrigued him. It was the potential he saw in Lucas away from a life of crime. The film became a platform for exploring the complexities of Lucas's character, and the respect that Washington and Lucas gained for each other during the production added depth to the understanding of the man behind the notorious Blue Magic operation. Speaking with Reuters, the actor stated, quote, He's a force of nature. He's a natural born leader. As he said, you know, if I had become a doctor, all my brothers would have become doctors. Indeed, the impact of Frank Lucas's actions on the lives of many was truly horrific and saddening. The story of his criminal empire and the devastating consequences of Blue Magic is one that deserved to be brought to light. American Gangster effectively captures this narrative, shedding light on the dark and complex world of DT and organized crime. From an entertainment perspective, the tale of Frank Lucas is undeniably fascinating. American Gangster stands out as a crime film that excels in delivering a compelling story with all the elements that make it a modern classic. One of the movie's fans wrote, quote, American Gangster was a phenomenal film. Regardless of how this or that happened, truths or lies, majority watched the film because Denzel Washington starred in it. A lot of us probably didn't know who Frank Lucas was because you were either not born yet or you were a very young child. Another one added, quote, I have to believe Frank Lucas was more ruthless than portrayed in the movie. You don't build an empire without busting a lot of heads. Denzel Washington and the team behind the film expertly crafted a narrative that resonates, ensuring its place is a captivating and enduring piece of entertainment for generations to come.